And as you teach this subject, and specifically when you teach younger people, um, why should young people study the life of Manasseh, his writings, his work? I mean, it's, I mean, it was absolutely fascinating. What's, is there a message as you teach this that you try to bring across, especially to young people today? Well, I have to be totally honest. Uh, I'm, I'm in a philosophy department. And so I never teach Manasseh. <laughs> He's just not part of the philosophical curriculum. Uh, but it doesn't mean I don't have an argument as to why people uh, should study him because he is an important figure in, in early modern Dutch intellectual, uh, sorry, early modern Jewish intellectual history, but also early modern Dutch intellectual history. Um, and his works do give us insight into a, maybe not the standard rabbinic way in which, um, in which Jewish um, intellectual figures approach these topics in the period, but to a very, fa to a fascinating and influential way. So if you, if you want to know anything about Jewish Gentile relations in the 17th century, you have to study Manasseh. His connections with the Gentile world um, all across Europe. And I would say, um, you know, the subtitle of the book, which was rejected by the press, was originally going to be the most important Jew, uh, sorry, the most famous Jew in the world, which is what he essentially was. Um, anybody who wanted to learn something about Judaism, any Gentile scholar who wanted to know something about Judaism would turn to Manasseh. And if you were to turn, if you were to ask some 17th century figure, name one Jew, one contemporary Jew, without question, Manasseh would have been the name. Uh, this has been just delightful and fascinating. Again, it's uh, Professor uh, Stephen Nadler's Manasseh and Israel, Rabbi of Amsterdam. And um, again, thank you so much uh, for today's um, interview. We appreciate it very, very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me.